The central hub is a strategy churches use to boost engagement. It exists to see your congregation take more next steps. And this is important because we don't want churches filled with passive spectators, but rather active participants. So in this video, we'll share with you eight different central hub setups from real churches to get you inspired and to show you that whether your church is big, small, portable, young, old, whatever, you can use the central hub in your context. Well, hey there, and welcome to Pro Church Tools, the show to help you share the message of Jesus while we navigate the biggest communication shift in 500 years. I'm your host, Alex Mills, joined as always by Brady Shearer. Every church is trying to accomplish the same thing. Sure. We say that, hey, maybe you say it differently. Yeah. You've got a cool church slogan. But at the end of the day, we're all trying to be churches that help people to love God, love others, and make disciples. That's it. And each of those stanzas, each of those objectives begins with a verb, mm -hmm. which requires an action. Yeah, it's an action phrase. You need your church to be doing stuff, right. actually <laughs> getting involved, yeah. moving towards Jesus, acting like Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that requires so much more than just showing up for a service. Yeah. And this foundation is where the central hub strategy was born hmm. because we were noticing that churches were having difficulty inspiring their church to take action. And there's a lot of different reasons for that that we'll get into, but this is why the central hub exists. And in this episode, we want to show you real churches that have created central hubs using uh, you know different spots in their church. These are physical locations. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you're listening to this episode, it might be, wor uh, might be worth watching because yeah. we've got real photos. Yeah, uh, really cool ones. You, now, I have to thank you for getting these because inside of our Nucleus uh, users Facebook group, mm -hmm. it's called Nucleus Insiders, you kind of sent out a message saying, hey, let's see your central hub because each of these are powered by Nucleus and people sent in their photos. Yeah, every once in a while, someone will post a central hub whether they like just finished it and they're super proud of it. Or sometimes I'll just like come across them on Instagram and be like, I don't follow these people. I found them in the Explorer time. I'm like, hey, that's a central hub. And so I wanted, I wanted to get like a master list. I wanted to see everyone's in one place. So I asked last week, I said, hey, uh, let's see your central hubs. And we got some really, really cool feedback. The reason the central hub is so powerful is because inevitably most churches confuse their congregations with what we call chaotic messaging, mm -hmm. where you've got a bunch of different promotions. You've got so many different things that your church can get involved in, small groups, events, ministries, services. But the problem is that we push people to so many different destinations to get involved. So we'll say things like check the bulletin right. or go to the lobby or visit our website, download our app, call the church, email a ministry leader, talk to the pastor. Mm -hmm. Those are just a few that I can think of off the top of my head. No, I wrote them down, but you know, <laughs> uh, steam it in. And the point here is that more choices generally leads to less decisions. Yeah. And this is a paradox that a lot of us have difficulty understanding. Right. But if you give people a ton of different options and then expect them to follow through, it's difficult because one, it's hard to remember which option is connected to which event. Mm -hmm. But also when we have so many different options, we start to get into this, well, I could do this, but I could also do this. And I, oh, I know I'll do nothing. We've talked about it before. It is kind of counterintuitive and you can't really get a hold of it until you start to evaluate what you're doing and start to track some of these metrics and be like, oh, people aren't signing up or taking as many next steps as we'd hope. And when you start to make these arrangements, you see those numbers go up and it's like, oh, they just needed fewer choices, right? We've talked about a study before, and this is kind of anecdotal at this point because I can't quote it, but it was like they set up, a, a company set up a jam installation in a grocery store, right? And let's say the first time they had like three types of jam, come try these jam. And then the next day they had like 27 types of jam. And it was on the day that when they had three types of jam, that sales went up. Cause it's like, oh, do I want strawberry, peach, or apricot, and obviously it's strawberry. But when there's 27 jams, it's like, I don't know if I want blackberry lime jam or if I want strawberry rhubarb. It's like, we got overwhelmed. And so the same thing is true in churches. When you want small group signups and you're giving people eight ways to sign up for small groups, they get a little overwhelmed and end up don't taking that next step. And if we believe that walking with Jesus is uh, an active thing, and we like to say it around here, more next steps equals more life change, and if that's what we want to see in our people at our church, then we have to facilitate a better way for them to take that step. The Central Hub consolidates every single next step to a single uh, destination. Mm -hmm. And there are three rules to make this happen because when you only have one destination, 
you have to make it available in certain ways. Yes. Otherwise, it cannot act as your central hub. And right. rule number one is that the central hub must be accessible 24-7. And this is why we suggest using a website. We built Nucleus. It's our church website builder. It helps you create a central hub for this reason. Mm-hmm. Because we want people taking next steps on Sunday after service, before service. But we also want them to be able to take a next step when they are in the break room on a Wednesday morning yeah. and they see a post on social and are inspired to take that next step. Yes. We don't want them to have to think, oh, okay, when I'm at church on Sunday, I'm going to make sure I do that. Oh, except that we're not at church this Sunday because we're going to the cottage. Right. So next week, uh, and then it's then it's too late. Exactly. Maybe you're they're laying in bed at night, you know, flicking through social instead of, you know, focusing on sleeping. And then they see, you know, a promotion and they're like, oh, I could do this right now, then in there. Mm-hmm. It needs to be accessible 24-7. When we see churches implement something like this, they automatically see more next steps simply because of availability. Sure. Rule number two, the central hub must be accessible from any device. Mm -hmm. And this is why we recommend not using a downloadable app for your central hub because web traffic is still 35 to 40% on desktop. Mm -hmm. So if you are using your central hub and you're using an app to facilitate that, you're automatically kind of negating 35%, one third of all web traffic, which again, is a breaking of the rule because we yeah. need it to be accessible from every device at all time. And then finally, the central hub must be able to capture, store, and distribute information. So those are the basic rules to making it happen. We just wanted to share one bit of feedback we got from a guy named Chris Taylor. Chris said, before our central hub, people at my church had so much trouble knowing where to go to find information. Email addresses were constantly forgotten. Bulletins were thrown away. Our connection desk was cluttered. But with the central hub, our members know exactly where to look. And this is the power of the central hub. Maybe not in the first week that you introduce it. Maybe not after the first month, but after a couple of months and definitely after that first year. When every single announcement that you have, Mm -hmm. when every single event that you host, when every single ministry that you're looking forward to has a single next step and it's the same identical destination every single time, it can radically transform your church's communications because people always know no matter what's coming up, no matter what they want to get involved Mm -hmm. in, no matter what information they need to acquire, they can always go to the exact same place place every single time. And this allows people to acquire information on their own. They don't always have to call the church and be like, what was that thing again for that? It allows them to sign up on their own. And again, this increases next steps, which is the entire point of what we're doing as churches. Yeah, this process takes time. I walk through this with churches all the time, how to transition from having, you know, 10 different ways to sign up for an event to having one way to sign up for every event. And it there is a transition period. You hit on it. It's not going to happen in the first week, maybe not even in the first month. Uh, churches are like ships, right? You have to kind of turn them slowly. But but one of the the strategies that we find when transitioning to a central hub is you, you have to, um, I'll hear from churches a lot. Be like, hey, we're just not getting the signups we hope to with our central hub. Be like, oh, well, how are you facilitating signups? Well, with the website and with a sign-up sheet at the back of the church. It's like, oh, well, you have to get rid of that sign-up sheet at the back of the church. There has to be one central location for every next step. And it's going to be a changing period. It's going to be uncomfortable at first. But before you know it, people's questions, they're going to stop asking you questions like, hey, where and how and what? It's like, oh, no, I know that there's one place to do everything. And it's this one place. So let's show you some examples of real churches. We've got images for each. All of these central hubs are powered by Nucleus, Mm -hmm. our church website building platform. You can get a free trial, no credit card required. Start building your own central hub. All you need is what, a name and an email? That's it nucleus.church is the URL to get started. So this first example that we have here, just to paint a mental image or a verbal picture or a mind's eye graphic. Got it. <laughs> or you can, or you could watch the episode and actually see it <laughs> with your eyes. That's fair. Okay, so there's this wall. It's painted navy blue. Yes. It says next steps. And there are three different ledges. Now, this church told us that on Sundays, that's where the kiosks are set up, which yes. are simply just iPads that are displaying their Nucleus website. But this picture was taken throughout the week, so mm-hmm. they're, they're missing right now. But what's important about this specific central hub is the big blue navy wall. Yes. Because a lot of people ask, okay, what should we call our central hub? And And they come up with the most clever names, sometimes even acronyms. What? Yeah. Someone uses our strategy, the central hub strategy, and then they use it. Not anymore. (laughs) Fair. So 
What we love about this, and we do this at my church, which is where this idea came from. I didn't come up with it, but I've been inspired by my church to use it. Yeah. Is to you can have a name for your your central sure. hub. You can call it the Connect Center. You can call it the Welcome Center. You can call it the Info Desk. But when referring to it publicly from stage, we always recommend, if you can, paint the wall a certain big, big bright color, and then just say, "Hey, go to the big orange wall. Go to the big blue wall," because. Not everyone knows, especially visitors, who are some of the people you definitely want them to take next steps because yeah. you might only have one or two chances. Um, for new people, they might not know what the Connect Center is or right. the Welcome Desk. I mean, maybe it's nicely labeled, but if you just say big blue wall, that is going to be you know perfect for almost every single person to find. And nobody needs to be impressed by some sort of clever name that you came up with. You're looking for people to take next steps and so make it as clear as possible. You know, if somebody's visiting your church for the first time, when they walk in, it's like sensory overload, right? There's a lot of stuff going on. And this is what I love about this strategy. If you paint a wall bright orange, it could say welcome wall. It could say welcome center. It could say whatever you want. They're probably not going to read what's on the wall, but when they're sitting in your service and you say, hey, if we want to connect with you, come meet us at the big orange wall after the service, they're going to remember. They don't know what it's set up there, but they saw that big orange wall. So it's just such a helpful like communication tool. You're going to see more people take next steps, especially those first-time visitors. I love this strategy. Well, you could also call it the Welcome Center, which would stand for, of course, <laughs> we especially love, love Christians opting into more... Visitor no, e. excursions. What's e. Welcome. Where oh, did I the V come more. from? I Welcome V. I forget. I had six <laughs> I letters know. out. I needed one. I <laughs> Five down, one for me. Anyway, more events. Don't use an acronym. <laughs> The next one we have, it's uh, this one is titled the Connect Center. What I, the reason we wanted to include this one was because, as far as I can tell, this central hub is not in the lobby, but it looks like it's in the sanctuary yeah. because there's a really tall lofted ceiling. You can also see uh, sound proofing yeah. um, panels that are on the wall. So this is actually interesting because we always think about the central hub being in the lobby. Sure. But if you have it, let's say, in your actual sanctuary, yeah. you can just say, go to the back of the room, yeah. which is another thing similar to saying go to the big blue wall mm -hmm. in the lobby. You can just say, hey, go to the back of the room and you can take your next step there. Yeah, although that one doesn't look like a pop-up, it's a great um, idea for someone, for a church who is a pop-up church. Like if you're meeting in a movie theater and let's say you don't have access to the lobby, you just set it up at the back wall and like you said, still use that verb, hey, meet us at the back wall. This next central hub that we have up here, we wanted to highlight the iPad stand. This iPad stand is from a company called Mount It, mm -hmm. and it uses, like, it kind of encases your tablet. So if you're using an iPad, it kind of encases it, and it obviously props it up from the ground. And which it's, it's got a lock on it, too. Oh, that's right. So yeah, no one can key. steal your iPad. Yeah. Those churchgoers. They'll take it. The Nefarious. Kids. The youths. It's the kids. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we also recommend using the Kiosk Pro app when creating your uh, central hub kiosk. We have a complete guide on creating a super church lobby kiosk, which is what we call it. We'll have that linked in the show notes and description with all the links to these actual products. But what the Kiosk Pro app allows you to do is it allows you to remove all the navigation. Mm -hmm. So you can go to your nucleus, let's say lifeabundant.info, and you can use this app, the Kiosk Pro app, to remove all of the navigation. Yes. So it looks like this native application within the tablet, and mm -hmm. then no one can navigate elsewhere. Yeah, it's locked down. Like, you can't hit the home button on the iPad and go to the home screen and start taking selfies or whatever, right? It's yeah. locked down on that on that screen, which is really helpful. So you don't see any skins from the app or anything. It just looks like your website would if you visited it on your own tablet or your own computer. But it's very helpful because it locks the tablet down on that site. Next central hub is one that's very simple. And mm -hmm. the reason we wanted to highlight this one is because you'll see in a lot of these images, tables, lighting, really nice wall mounts. There's a marquee, there's screens. And you might be thinking like, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. We are a portable church or we just don't have that much money. Sure. We don't have the ability to create something so monumental and extravagant. Hey, that's okay. This church, they got their tablets set up with their stands, mm -hmm. but all they have is these kind of expandable posters that collapse, yeah. and these would be super simple to set up. You can get these expandable posters anywhere from print shops, and this would allow you to set up a central hub really in a matter of minutes, but it still looks elegant. Yeah, and you could put it anywhere. You don't also need to use one of these um, full standing up stands. You can use cheaper stands mm -hmm. for your tablets. These stands 
in this next image are tabletop stands. And the ones that we recommend are called Lamical, L-A-M-I-C-A-L-L stands. Uh, yes. These are not the exact Lamical ones, but they're very similar. If you don't need one that you know locks off the tablet and ha- has its own stand from the ground, if you can just put it on top of a table, you know you can save probably 100 bucks per stand, yeah. which could be really meaningful. And you can just put them on a table like this, and they still look nice. I should say something about mm. this one. If you're watching, you can see that this looks almost like, a, I don't know, like an ice cream stand or something. It's built with like pallet wood. It's kind of small. It says the hub on top. I believe if I remember correctly, this one is actually on wheels. So this church built this little this little hub location mm. and slapped it on wheels. So if they need to move it or if they need to repurpose it throughout the week, they can use it. So it's very cool. The next one we want to highlight particularly because what you'll see in this picture is a number of different tabletop kiosks. They've got their iPads. They're in these tabletop stands that they're on these tables. But what you'll see is four different people that are standing at this central hub. And one of the things that people ask when they're implementing their central mm-hmm. hub is like, what about people that maybe aren't as familiar with technology or are not as apt to use technology? And what we recommend is that you position volunteers, perhaps even older volunteers yeah. at the central hub so that when someone does take that next step to show up and they are a bit apprehensive about using, you know, this nucleus application because they haven't done it before, Mm -hmm. you can be there right there, hopefully someone their age, so it feels like, well, if, if they can do it, so can I. And then you can walk them through it in person and show them how easy that it is to use. And then once they've done it once, they're that much more likely to be able to do it again on their own, not just at the kiosk on a Sunday necessarily, but they could do it from any of their own devices, their computer, their phone, their tablet at home throughout the week. And so this is a great way to speed up the learning Mm -hmm. curve with your congregation, not to just leave it as self-serve, like just do it yourself, but to actually have someone there showing them how to do it. Like for instance, my movie theater, and it's so funny how many parallels there are between movie theaters and churches when it comes to next steps, but my movie theater just recently in the last year implemented only self-serve kiosks. Mm -hmm. So you can't go up and just like say, I would like to see Spider-Man at seven and then give you a ticket. And what they did for a while was they had people that kind of were hovering around these kiosks. So if someone showed up and they were having a bit more difficulty at the beginning, they could help them. But if you were able to do it on your own, you also didn't have to like wait up for that individual. And it's a year later, and now I don't really see those employees like have Hovering around there mm-hmm. because I think everyone has got the hang of how to do it themselves yeah. because they actually walked people through it for the first year. Now, this is essential in another way because not everyone in your church has an email address. Not everyone in your church has a device that's connected to the internet. Um, and so what we found in our context, because a lot of people say, hey, Alex, like we've got people in our church who I know don't have an email address. So I guess we still have to do paper sign up. So it's like, well, Maybe you don't. Maybe you can have a volunteer walk them through um, signing up on the tablet after the service. And if there's no follow-up required, if it's just like, uh, we did this for our women's conference. There wasn't any really follow-up required. It was just receiving payment. So there were a handful of folks in our church who either didn't have a device or have an email address that we were able to fill, like submit a form on the device after the service with them. And, and they were able to do it right there because they couldn't do it at home because they don't have a computer themselves. And so even for folks who aren't as connected as some of us are, you can still help them take that next step on that tablet if they don't have access to one. Yeah, because the real power for your internal operations as a church is to have all of your information stored in a single database. Yeah. So you don't have these sign-up sheets over here and some people signed up through the app and some people signed up through the website and a couple people just called the church office of and you're trying did. to consolidate all of it. And it's you know way somebody too messy. left an envelope on the pastor's desk too. Oof, an envelope. <laughs> yes. Just like cash inside, like yes. sign me up for this, please. Yeah. And let's say you have someone that doesn't have access to the internet. They don't have an email address. Well, in your form, your sign up form, if you did need follow-up, here's another option. You could put in a phone number yeah. field and you could even put in a fake email address. Like do sure. not email at me.com, <laughs> use phone. <laughs> and that way when someone's going through, you know, they would recognize that's not a real email and yeah. then they could follow up through phone. There you go. And that's another way to make sure that all of your information for this event, for your internal side is in one spot, yes. but it also kind of navigates around these, you know, fringe cases because that's why multiple sign-up options exist. Because churches sure. are like, there's no one solution that fixes everything. Well, that's not true. But then we say, okay, we'll have an app for the people that are like, they like apps and mm-hmm. we'll have the website for the website folk mm-hmm. and we'll have the sign-up sheets for the sign-up folk. Exactly. It's like, you're making things so much more difficult for you and you're making things more difficult for your congregation mm-hmm. because the chaotic communications is, is a result of that. And so everybody loses. And there are going to be 
these navigation solutions you have to come up with for the fringe cases. Sure. But we found with the central hub, there's always a workaround. Mm -hmm. And if you can find that workaround, you can keep your sanity by having everything in one spot. Sure can. Next, uh, central hub that we want to illustrate here is one that's on wheels. And this is an example of a church that, you know, if you're portable, you can put it on wheels, you put it into the closet yeah. and then you roll it out on Sunday. Yeah, you can see that whole structure there. You can see yep. it. it just looks like a table kind of, they have those uh, tabletop um, iPad stands mm -hmm. and that, you could probably like, bolt those down so they don't like fall off when you start rolling it around. Yeah, and or not, you, you could you that. could use that table for any other like purpose throughout the week if you needed to. It's true. It's really really cool. And then finally, we wanted to show you uh, one of the most extravagant central this, hubs that we've this ever one seen. Is out of this world. <laughs> it has its own marquee. It's got three different screens that are definitely the size of me and Alex on top of each other, mounted vertically. And mounted vertically. Yeah. Like ballers. Yeah. And then they have three different tabletop stands. And we show you this not to say, like, you need to be this extravagant, right. <laughs> but just to say, no matter if you just have a single, like, rollout poster that can collapse or you have a complete, like, construction build, the Central Hub works at any type of church. Sure. The strategy is what matters. Mm -hmm. And there's so many different ways, as you've seen in eight different examples, to kind of manifest that strategy. But if you stick to it, if you use it exclusively, right? Like, you start going to the gym and you're not just eating, like, a ton more calories <laughs> right. at night because, like... But we're going to the gym. Yeah, yeah but, yeah, you know, yeah. you still have sign-up sheets available alongside yes. your central hubs. So you're yeah. kind of undercutting the whole strategy to begin with. If you stick with it, you're going to see big results. Head to Nucleus.Church, get your free trial, mm -hmm. start building your own central hub. And if you ever have trouble, hey, maybe you'll end up talking to this guy, hey. one of our customer success titans. Oh, I received that. In took Jesus a while, name. but I found it. I found it. <laughs> That'll do it for this episode of Pro Church Tools. We'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching this video. 